Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, February the 25th, Monday. Hope you're doing okay this afternoon. Let's take a look as we start off things with actual tropical cyclone info, because we have one since we last got together. Actually, there was two, and um, one of them is pretty much just a remnant, but the other one that's still out there is this typhoon Wu tip, or however you pronounce it, and this is what it looks like here. The track of it, luckily, it missed in terms of a direct hit the Marianas over here, including Guam. But uh, it was a pretty close call there, especially this early in the season, and it was very powerful at one point. The equivalent of a um, uh, um, now, wait a minute, I don't think it was upgraded to what we would consider a Cat Five, but it was called a Super Typhoon. And anyway, this is what the track was. There's the forecast. I like this from the University of Wisconsin site. We can go in and add different layers. We can take layers away, and we can just see what it looks like on the beautiful satellite shot. A very well-developed central dense overcast around here, the eye in the center, large outflow channels on either side, uh, maybe more dry air and some shear kind of working on it a little bit. You see that sort of stretched out look on this side, that stretched out appearance, and that's indicative of stronger up, upper level winds. And it's February, so somewhere along this path over here that it's going to take resides cooler sea surface temperatures, and this will eventually fade out as it takes a tremendous amount of heat and energy with it from the deep tropics. Uh, I mean, heck, it's only still below 15 degrees north latitude as it is there's 10 north and so yeah it's way out there in the tropics in the western part uh, the western hemisphere western pacific sorry not the western hemisphere i have a cold a head cold so bear with me maybe some more mistakes will be made today western pacific all right soi this is kind of part of the whole thing that this big dip i mean look at that whoo i say it often if this was your stocks, that would be bad. You got all your stuff invested, and if that represented your entire portfolio, the 30-day would be awful. The 90-day is not so bad. It's like, okay, a little gradual you know, drop-off, but this big dip here, and you can go down and look at the table, and you can see all these numbers, the daily contributors here as of late, some of them really getting down there, minus 43 um, so this big drop in the Southern Oscillation Index, complicated to explain on this video, but it's all part and parcel related to the formation of this system. There was another one in the Southern Hemisphere. I got that part right. And kind of related to this El Nino pattern that's now prevalent out here, but it's not a very strong El Nino. We can look at that on this nice global Mercator shot. You know, the equatorial Pacific through here, warmer than the long-term average, no doubt, but it's not alarmingly so. It's not overwhelming the system. It's a very weak El Nino signature, and we've had a pretty solid westerly wind burst recently with these strong westerlies coming across down in the lower several thousand feet of the atmosphere, helping to kick off this overall pattern that generated these two tropical cyclones um, within you know this general vicinity in recent days. So interesting, but I'm still not convinced that we're going to see much more than you know as I call it just this side of warm neutral. So here down the middle of the scale would be dead on neutral, right? And I think we'll see just you know just this side of warm neutral, nothing over here. And none of these anomalies over here reflect that. There's no reds and pinks or whatever. And you can see on the global scale, too, the Atlantic main development region still running slightly above the long-term average. A couple of areas out there, maybe a little bit more so, maybe a half a degree Celsius. Just something to keep an eye on, a zoomed-in shot of it here. Um, southwest, especially, of the coast of Africa, all those patches of darker oranges you know that's getting on up there according to this scale maybe a degree celsius it just depends it's just something to monitor 
But look, the whole Atlantic, generally speaking, the whole North Atlantic here, um, warmer than the long-term averages would suggest. Pretty warm in the Gulf, warm in the Gulf Stream, of course. Um, you know, just watch it. That's what we do. And gives us something to do during the off season. And uh, look here, even in the Pacific, you know, just not much. You know, some of these patches of just yellow right through here. And you can nitpick at this and look at the various pixels. If you really want to blow this up in Photoshop or something, you know, I, we've all seen stronger El Ninos than this. I mean, come on, it's barely an El Nino. And if we look at the subsurface anomalies. Fairly impressive, no doubt. You see how it's been evolving into the first part of the year. But a very large cold pool developing in the far eastern Pacific over here. And despite all that westerly wind action at the surface in the west Pacific, really not any more of this stuff forming. See how it goes away? And it's way down deep over here in the central Pacific. Uh, all of those really strong positive anomalies are more than a hundred meters deep. See that? And it'll stop in just a second, this loop, uh, on the most previous update, which I think was the 19th or 17th, something like that. So I look at this to really try to help me predict the future a little bit, that there's not much reinforcements in the wings, in the West Pack. This kind of dwindles away, you see that? Kind of fades out, and it certainly doesn't strengthen. And it's all pretty deep and then this is really interesting too let's see how this progresses um, this is just not your look of a big time El Nino event and those weak El Ninos coupled with a warm tropical Atlantic overall and in the subtropics are very warm it's gonna be an interesting hurricane season coming up I don't think it'll be dead where the Pacific's signature will create so much rising motion over there that it'll just eliminate most hurricanes in the Atlantic this year. That's the way I feel about it right now. It makes sense. Hey, it can change, that's for sure, but that's what it looks like right now. So we'll keep looking at this, the, you know, these updates every few days here, this subsurface data. This is the 17th of February. We'll see what it looks like next week. Now let's visit actual sea surface temperatures real quick. Spring break time period coming up for lots and lots of people, mainly younger adults and children. Uh, so they're going to head to the water in some cases, in many cases. And if you do so along the Florida coast, especially a good deal of the, you know, we'll call it the bottom four-fifths of the peninsula there, uh, you know, Cedar Key, Tampa St. Pete, down to Sanibel Island, and certainly in the Keys down there, and even on the southeast coast over here, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, etc. Nice and toasty, relatively speaking. 78, 79, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But look, there's your 80 degrees right in there, just north of the Keys in the Florida Bay area, the Florida Straits. Nice and warm, 80 degrees or so. And then all this in here, 81 down here if you're going to go to the Isle of Youth south of Cuba. Uh, and hey, if you're going to go down to the Bay of Campeche, I mean, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. See, I got myself laughing and I triggered the stupid bronchitis. Very warm down there, too. Bottom line, sun angle getting higher in the sky, so naturally, hey, I mean, this is what it looked like, um, what is that, the 13th or so? So in just a short amount of time, this is the 13th. Here we are today. Actually, it's yesterday. It's always a day behind and gradually warming things up. So spring breakers, you should like that in most locations. At least we haven't had any huge deep Arctic intrusions to really chill the Gulf down uh, to where it's just unbearable. In the Atlantic, now this is cool. I like watching this ice up here. Ugh, forget that. Cold off New England where winter has been but no nor'easters, zero. Uh, which is unbelievable. That's like going through a hurricane season without any hurricanes, in my opinion. You know, no nor'easters this year that I can remember. And if there was one, it was piddly. Um, look down here, though. Let's zoom back in real quick. Sorry about that. One little area. Oh, two areas. 
of 26 let's get a different color shall we make this show up better we use sky blue 26 celsius showing up in the gulf stream down here no big deal just it's warming up and the gradient the difference between temperature over the distance here is shrinking um, if you're going to do spring break in Myrtle Beach or down in Beaufort or Charleston Isle of Palms a little chilly in the water down there but it's getting warmer overall depending on when your spring break is for my kids it's like mid-April and hey if this continues with that nice southeast ridge overall water temperatures could be near 70 in the uh, surf uh, by mid-April who knows all right let's transition over to lower 48 weather what an active pattern it has been despite no nor'easters in the northeast let's just change this back over uh, we'll use red no nor'easters up here um, lots and lots of snow including in Vegas Tucson Phoenix uh, did Phoenix get any I don't think they did maybe they did I don't remember LA had snow falling uh, craziness Palm Springs Vegas like I said our friend Paul in Pahrump Nevada uh, tweeted from our live nest cam that we have out there um, I should have brought that up to show you what it looked like we'll do that next week all right I promise uh, but the active pattern is going to continue so winter storm watches high wind these greens are flood um, you know what it's nice to have 12 feet of snow in the mountains for the snowpack and the water the fresh water that comes from that but sometimes way too much of a good thing in a too short a period of time and you have some issues so here we go again out west uh, pretty active pattern will remain and then wow how about that windstorm up here that was bringing just insane just regular sustained winds as this really strong mid-latitude cyclone moved out and up like this why couldn't we get one that did this that would have been I don't know that's just more what I'm used to but no they've all tracked like in this corridor through here for some reason and not offshore uh, that's really wild too. somebody that knows more than me about that kind of thing what do you think the reason behind that is it's kind of strange nevertheless very rainy down south recently look at all those flood warnings those are for rivers uh, we had the tornado in Columbus Mississippi and vicinity the other day um, we're almost there folks almost to spring and the transition to where we get that battle zone of warm Gulf moisture and air coming up which is unstable meeting the colder more stable Canadian air and we get these battle zones in between sometimes that'll be down here in Dixie sometimes it'll be up here in Tornado Alley proper and we have to be ready for that it's coming all right real quick a look at tropical tidbits awesome slider where you can slide through uh, the animation here if you will over the next uh, well you can go all the way out to two weeks this is the upper level pattern with the surface features plotted note that at the onset here um, and wait a minute this is old let's get to the right one come on uh, 12z there we go um, good now I got the right one maybe it was right all the time I don't know it's the head cold look at how generally speaking it is a zonal flow just a little bit of a wave to it but it's very gradual you see that that is very important why because we are not flooding the lower 48 with a ton of air coming this way out of Canada there's a little bit of that component uh, right up here in the northern tier states certainly you know just really limited to southern Canada the Great Lakes and the far northern border states of Canada everything else generally kind of mild relatively speaking especially in the south and all the way down to Florida where the ridging has created temperatures in the 90s last week it's just an amazingly hot down there for so early how does this change over the next couple of weeks any big dips yeah a little bit there's some troughiness low pressure in the upper atmosphere more of a northwesterly flow 
dip in the jet stream, temperatures, storminess, all will follow. Temperatures drop, storminess comes up, so forth and so on. Then, right back to yeah, a little bit of a wavy pattern, but just no giant except out west here. Ooh, more cold air and storminess, four corners area right there. But in the east, look what's coming, southeast especially. There's that southeast ridge coming back. So Florida, I mean, this is two weeks out. It can change, certainly. But these are pretty big features that are less likely to be just completely off than one single feature like a hurricane or a storm or whatever. But we're getting, you know, this is March 12th or 13th, so we're on almost to the middle of March by the time that run is over. And things should transition towards spring anyway. So there you go. Uh, we're all caught up. Again, on Friday, I've been teasing this. Our Patreon and Hurricane Track Insider members, I'm going to have an announcement on Friday in the form of a video where I'm going to introduce a lot of new things that I'm going to be doing and enhancing, etc. So our current uh, Patreon supporters and members and Hurricane Track Insiders, all of y'all, I'll post that on the chat or on the Patreon app, etc. Um, you know, a hint here, basically looking back at last year and realizing the accomplishments that were made, especially using the remote cameras, we are on to something that I really need to expand and take it to the next level. We know it works. It worked well. It's astounding how well it works, honestly, especially those remote GoPros that we can set up uh, to function even if the live cameras get knocked off the air by the intensity of the hurricane. But think of what we can do with other events, you know, and that's what I'm going to start talking about on Friday, how we take this and grow it into something even bigger and more exclusive um, as we develop and continue to grow this amazing community that's comprised of about 150, 160 people right now, some on Patreon, a vast majority there, and then a couple of dozen uh, fairly long-time members at HurricaneTrack.com, the subscription site that we've had since 2005. And some people have been there since day one. So this Friday, major big-time new announcement, and I'm very excited about it. Hopefully this head cold will go bye-bye, and I'll be 100%. All right, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I am Mark Set of HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for being on the other side of whatever screen you are watching me and listening to me from. I'll talk to you again in this context next Monday. And the announcement on Friday, I'll make that announcement public also Monday morning. I'll talk to you then.